Hello guys and welcome back. Listen, we're gonna wrap up this episode on converting the 8H differential to a positive attraction differential. So if you are not a subscriber, make sure you hit that subscribe button down there on your right and hit that notification bell to let you know when a video actually comes out. So let's get started. Now, if you haven't seen the last episode, make sure you go back and look at it. We had to order the new Barons for the new planetary positive traction Yukon differential. And I got it from the local parts store, which was no problem. And then we're gonna go ahead and install this and put it all back together. First thing you wanna do, you wanna go ahead and install your bearings. So there are several ways that you can actually install your bearings. What I'm gonna do is use the a punch, hammer, and safety glasses. Anytime you hit on a baron, make sure you wear safety glasses. That's a must. Now, normally I take an old baron and I cut it here, cut it here, and I just use this section here to put on top of the new baron to actually hit on it to install it. Make sure if you install a baron and you're using a punch, make sure you hit on the inner diameter because if not, you would damage the baron. Now, you can also take it to your local machine shop. Now, in my area, the local machine shop, it's going to cost $40 per barn. And I have two barns I need to install, and I don't want to pay $80. Use a smaller punch to get it started. Use a bigger punch to drive it home. Got to get a smaller punch. We are completed on this side. We're gonna flip it over and do the other side. Now, what I'm gonna do, now it's time to put on the ring gear. Now I wanna point out something. I just wanna show the thickness of the, the uh, original planetary. This is the thickness of it. And when you look at this one here, the Yukon, we actually gonna need a little longer bolts to actually go back with the uh, Yukon. In the meanwhile, right now what I'm going to do, put the ring gear in place. And to make sure that it's actually lined up, because you hate to put the ring gear on and it's not lined up. So I'm going to put in some bolts to just make sure that it stays in line. Take a block, knock it in place. You can see the difference. So I had to go with bolts uh, at least a quarter of an inch longer. What I'm gonna do, and this is just something that I want to do, I'm gonna put a little thread lock, just a little thread lock on the threads. I'm gonna to torque these bolts down to 60 foot pounds. So now we have our bolts torqued down to our rain gear. That looks real good. I'm gonna set this over to the side. Yeah. What we need to do is we're going to install our pinion. So there is a pallet bearing 
right in here. I'm gonna put a little grease around here for the shaft to actually have a smooth install. And I wanna put a little grease around the bearing. This shaft right through the pallet bearing. I have ordered this O-ring and every time when I received it, uh, there's only one. And it's actually too large. So what I did was, I went down to Lowe's Hardware and I bought this pack of O-rings. Well, here's the part number, 10714. And I bought this for about, gosh, about a dollar and 10 cents. So I picked out the best O-ring that I could replace the old O-ring with, and it was only one that would actually fit. Next, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna put our, our shim in place, and then the O-ring here, I'm gonna take a little grease, and put around the O-ring. Grease on our O-rings because we don't want to damage the O-ring when we slide it back onto the housing. There we go. Keep in mind, we just want to hit the bearing. Next, we want to put on our yoke. I like to take the, the yoke and actually put a little grease around the shaft for the seal. So now what I want to do I want to take time out to actually check the load on the bearing. And I want to use this fish scale here. Just want to wrap my string around. Just going to check, see how much of a load I have. Okay, I'm pretty satisfied with that. Now we're going to flip this over and we're going to install our ring gear. I'm going to put a little grease around the, the planetary bearings. Guys, I have this thing that I just don't like to put bearings in dry. Okay, this is the fun part. Beautiful. Our adjusters, the adjusters, we just want to screw them in. And what I'm going to do is just turn the adjusters to where it feels pretty good to me. And then after that, I'm going to put the dial indicator on it to make sure that we have the proper backlash. Backlash is very important to get to make sure you have right because it, it saves the life of the ring gear and the pinion gear 
and you don't want to have too much of a gap. What we're going to do is use a dial indicator and we're going to put it on our ring gear and we're going to set our bat lash. You want between 10 and 15, it's 12. I'm going to lock it down right there. I'm going to tighten down my caps and that should do it. Then we're going to torque down our caps. Now we're going to lock down our adjusters. I'm going to make sure you torque down all of your bolts. It's time to put her back together. Now we're going to put our gasket on. And I'm gonna put Permatex Ashley on both sides. Normally I don't. Normally I just put Permatex on one side of a gasket. Any Permatex you feel comfortable with. Put a little thread tape around our breeder tube. Let's not forget to put our tag back on. That's very important. That's all you have to do to change a standard differential into a positive traction differential. I show you step by step, so you don't need me anymore. And the only thing I have to do now is just slide the axles back in and it'll be complete. But uh, I look forward to using this Yukon. This is the first time I actually use a Yukon differential. So uh, stay tuned for future videos as you'll see when we put the car back together that we will actually see how this baby's gonna work. I hope this video was helpful, and if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Do not forget to subscribe, and take care. God bless.